Valtrin Network. What's up, guys? Is here uh, from the DC vs. Marvel podcast, and uh, I'm representing uh, DC Comics. And once again, with me is my boy Ed's representing the red of Marvel Comics, although he's kind of not today. <laughs> Bigger in celebration of uh, the, the gimmick oh, that I've been that I've been trying to uh, pitch for so many years. They're finally doing it. They're finally doing it. DCPD. Ed puts this pitch out there for years and then it gets, you know, it comes out and it's like, no, you know, no check? thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No thank you. No invite to the set. No like, you know, what, what, how, how do you think about doing this? You know, all that kind of stuff. None of, none of that is there, man. So No love. It's how it is. Just take. Take. Just take. <laughs> Never give. Disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful, <laughs> man. So <laughs> otherwise, how you been how you been, bro? Yeah, I've been getting there. Like if I if I start balding out crying halfway through this podcast, guys, I've got a bit of a toothache and some <laughs> neck cramp issues, but I, I just gotta deal with it. Don't worry. I will be it, Don't worry. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna gonna suffer uh in silence or or, or just or and hopefully the pain won't silent. break through yeah yeah the pain the pain won't break through man but um but yeah so uh have you been up to anything in the world of dc and marvel this week or comic books comic books in general yeah i've been watching a bunch man i've been watching what's the comic book company called if you're into indie comics the comic called warrior nun arctic mm-hmm. press in oh has that comics. come out now that's come out now that yeah? came out last week so i've been giving that a go um, if you're a fan of that comic book, it's nothing like the comic book. But the gimmick is that it comes from a, a Valkyrie from Norse mythology, abandons the Norse gods and that religion with the rise of Christianity. And so she begins mm-hmm. to fight for, for God, basically, for the main religion. And then as she, after she dies, she gives her power. She inhabits hosts of warrior nuns down the line. That's in the comics. So they inherit the spirit of this mm-hmm. Valkyrie. Remorse. But in this comic, it's a, a warrior which was in the Crusades, a female crusade, which I don't think there ever was any females in the Crusades. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm not going to say no, because I'm, I'm maybe pretty wrong with it. She's fighting for the church, gets, dies on the battlefield, an angel comes down from heaven, sees that she's too important for the cause. I'm going to sacrifice my life and my existence as an angel by taking his halo and embedding it into this uh, female warrior. And then she mm-hmm. becomes a warrior. And that's, this is from the show. And then okay. after she dies, this halo, which is like a physical thing, has to be removed. And then in, whoever it embeds into becomes the new warrior now for the next generation. Uh, which, okay. Okay. conceptually, it's actually pretty cool, but the execution yeah. is just... <laughs> I saw the trailer of that. It reminded me a bit of Tron. You know, when they got the discs on the back. Yeah, right? yeah, he has <laughs> that. When, he, like... when she gets upset or she's in a battle, it just glows. Yeah. And... It's actually kind yeah. of cool. <laughs> Conceptual-wise, kind of has that buffy finger on with the Slayers, but it's not executed with any personality. Like, it has budget. It's shot in Europe and Italy and Spain. and They get all these cool little sets, but there's no flair to it, you know? It kind of gets yeah. too much in the melodrama of, you know... A lot of these things, it's the same thing. They don't have that special, special something yeah, do yeah. that sets it apart. Like, you know? like, what, I think I mentioned it before, but what made Buffy work is that for all the negativity, what's going on now with Joss Whedon, he has a voice as a writer. That's, he has personality in what he writes when he's on yeah. film. And that's what made Buffy work for so many years. And it kind of needs that type of person running the show, which it just doesn't have. It's just, yeah, it's just by numbers. So is it going to be renewed for a second season? I this think thing, it, it just is. Be... I think okay. it is, but I'm at a point with Netflix that you just don't... It, I imagine it will get a second season and then get cancelled because that's what's happened with uh, Sabrina, Teenage Witch, a show which mm-hmm. I did enjoy from Archie Comics, but now it, apparently it's been axed. So it's got one more half season to come and then that's it. And then that's it, yeah. That's what happens with Netflix. They just kind of keep it going, but once it gets a bit too expensive, they just cut the money and give it to another new show where all the money goes, and then they cancel that after, like, three seasons. It's like, you don't feel like it's worth investing in a new Netflix show because it's yeah. like going to end before it's time. Netflix, Netflix is like the... Um, if you think about the epitome of today's society, it's Netflix, yeah. right? It's like literally like you want everything, like, straight away, right? And it comes there. And then also, like... Um, 
you know, uh, they, they build up the hype train all the time. So yeah. that, that first season is hype train. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, let's Sabrina not was massive. let it grow. Sabrina yeah. was massive. There were posters everywhere, billboards, and it, it was social media, everyone was talking about it. And now it's like, what, past the two seasons that they separated to four halves. Now that's coming to an end. They're like, yeah, we're bored with this now. Yeah, that intention span, that TikTok <laughs> attention span is just, yeah, yeah it's just a pretty. And I was watching uh, the, what's it, ah, what's it called? The Charlie's Throne mm-hmm. Netflix movie. Which yes, is based on yes. another comic book. Oh God, mm-hmm. that's it from an image mm-hmm. comics. So far, it was pretty good, but I haven't finished it yet. So I'll give you a proper review next week. But it's a very cool concept. These sort of, uh, ba- it's basically like a military mercenary team of people that are basically like Wolverine. They just heal or mm-hmm. Deadpool's. So you can't kill them, and they've been they've existed since various points in history, ancient Egypt, uh, medieval days, and they've just been fighting in the, all these wars as this sort of military group, which is yeah, cool concept. But I'm not sure where it's gonna go, so I'll report back. But so far, it's alright. Actions I, a bit. I, yeah. I really I love stuff like that when they kind of have like a historical event, mm. and then they try and like say like this person was involved or, or yeah, whatever, and then, like the Highlander you know, sort like, of thing. That's the only thing I liked about X Men was that you know when Magneto bent the bullet and killed uh, yeah. <laughs> killed JFK by mistake, yeah. you know, and it's like ah, oh, you know, because he was an alien, he was a mutant like them basically. I still um, and he tried to protect him. You know, I'm still bitter about we never got the concepts. I think before First Class came out, they were talking about it being a Magneto movie mm-hmm. where he's just going after. It was going to be like a James Bond inspired movie where Magneto would be the star just hunting down Nazis and it was going to be in the 60s. That, that was good. That, insane. And then they didn't go with that, but they put elements of it into first class when we saw Fastbender mm. in Argentina and all of that. But that as a whole movie would have been so cool with superpowers, was- like a James Bond superpowers in the 60s. That would have been wicked. They could, and, and they could have made it like, like they made Quicksilver. So Quicksilver is kind of like, he's got that cool concept, right? And yeah. everybody's looking forward to it. They could have thought up so much crazy stuff oh, for every single thing that so he's doing. That was, like, the coolest, that was the coolest scene in um, First Class mm-hmm. when he went to the bar in Argentina and he's talking about like the, the blood and honor of the sword that was on the wall. Yeah. And, uh, and when he did the bullets flat, flying back, oh. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, so for me, I uh, I received a couple of comic books today. One of them was Ooh. that. I'm the red hood. Yeah. All right. And uh, and the other and the other one was this one, which I haven't actually read before, but Ooh. I am gonna read it. So it's kind of like um, you know, before we were talking about Clayface and stuff and Clayface's story, right? Mm-hmm. They seem to be sending like these graphic novels where it's kind of like Two Faces story and a Mad Hatter story and uh, like all this kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, those are quite uh, interesting. So actually see, focusing man. on the villains rather than. Yeah, I mean, there's some of these, like, uh, you know, I haven't read, like, every single, you know, uh, Batman comic book there is, but... Have you read all the ones behind you? I've read all of them, yeah. Ah, (laughs) I've read all of those, ah. yeah. Um, But basically, like, there's sometimes you'll get something like this, and I'll be like, what what was that? Mm. Uh, The the newer stuff is the stuff that when I look at, I'm like, I'm you know, I haven't really read this. Because Mm. you'll get something that is, like, 2015 or 2016, and I'll be like, okay maybe i haven't i haven't seen this you know yeah um so so that's the stuff man um i actually like i i, I um this week well this is a couple of days ago i saw uh the most disturbing uh horror that you'll ever see in your entire life there as well right what was it <laughs> okay give it to me give it to me <laughs> I love horror. And it was, it, it was, um, it was Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith. Oh, geez, that. <laughs> oh. the, thing, the funny <laughs> thing about this is, this has been an open secret for years. Yeah. Like I remember talking about this with a friend of mine years ago at work about rumors about them having like this open marriage and relationship where they were having mm. all these like lovers and stuff. So it's the rumors were always out there, and they say that they're on a break when this happened, but. Yeah, this, I don't know why it's such a massive surprise to people, but watching them just talk it out in public like that was just painful, man. It's so, and, and do you know the thing is, right? Um, I actually, because I, because, you know, I heard about this, uh, the same thing, like, you know, about their, their relationship and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm. 
Um, but I don't think that's actually true, right? Because when Will Smith was there, he's like crying and stuff. I mean, he's an actor, so obviously he's, you know, but at the same time, it's kind of like, uh, this looks a bit one-sided. This kind of looks like Jade is more like, I want that lifestyle rather yeah. than rather than him wanting that lifestyle. And that's when it gets like a bit okay, you know, it's a bit of a weird, weird kind it's of thing. It's always man. one so, more than the other. It's always it's, one more than the other. If you're ever in a point where you're about to have a threesome, guys, answer yourself. Is this truly your thing? <laughs> is, is, is your girl really into this? Because if she ain't, you ain't surviving this. Because <laughs> it's going to be it, uh, your relationship. That's the thing, man. That's the thing. I, I, I pity uh, like en- anybody who's like basically like if some people are like watching this and it generally like i've seen like all the social media stuff um she's generally getting like um you know applause for it pretty really much. i'm like, seeing a lot of hate like, a lot of people or, it, more clowning her she te- tees the butt of all the jokes the yeah yeah clowns. like basically like but um but kind of like you know people asking the question like oh is this a is this a good way to do things and stuff like that and it's just like i don't know man to, to for me the reason why i brought this up is basically because um uh if one of us are listening and we know they are because gcpd is now coming right you remember um, my uh, I I want to say, as the representative of the Dark Knight, right? I I am <laughs> I am I do not want Fish Mooney and <laughs> and, oh, and Deadshot yeah. and oh, Deadshot to God. ever ever come back to DC after oh, what I saw, uh, because you can, you can keep those actors and just chuck them somewhere. <sighs> I don't want them as part of DC uh, anywhere uh, ever I, again. You I have to I mean? openly say I never liked him as Deadshot. I, just, I was never <laughs> at ease with that casting. It just didn't fit with me. It was. Um, I think the reason why they did it is because they kind of thought. Uh, what was that film? Focus. Focus. Yeah. Was it? Yes. They thought, okay, let's let's redo that chemistry. Basically, didn't that um, come out after? Was that before? Was that before? Or was that I'm after? Pretty sure it was after. Pretty sure. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was. But in, either way, that's like the biggest rumor now is that Margot Robbie and Will Smith. Yeah. Up. I don't know. She's denying it, so I don't know. I don't know. But who can deny yeah. that Will Smith charm, man? That was back. Come on, man. That Will Smith, that sort of Fresh Prince charm. I don't know, girls. They melt for that. That, yeah. Yeah, mm. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe, maybe somebody who is just, you know, the average person, I guess, or, or whatever. But, but I don't know. Uh, somebody in Hollywood. Would they would they do that? I don't she know. was right. She was fresh into Hollywood at that point. She That's true. Just come in. That so. is true. That mm. is true, man. So yeah, it's another rumor. It's another. It's another rumor <laughs> stuff. So uh, go from a rumor to something that is actually being confirmed. Which another thing. Do you know what, guys? If you want to know, right? Uh, you know, there's so many podcasts out there. Comic book podcasts. You know, uh, like you know. Uh, pop culture podcast stuff like that if you want to hear predictions that actually come true you come here right mm-hmm. because once again eds came out with this there before which is elena Bel- uh, belova uh being the uh the takeover from uh you know um so it's belova is it belova elena belova taking over from black widow uh that was the thing that you were like you know, oh yeah. To, yeah, yeah, yeah yes uh so so, <laughs> so basically the um the director of black widow has confirmed that um elena belova who is i can't remember the actress's name Simon um, pew uh, florence florence florence, yeah, pugh. florence pugh. um she is uh basically gonna be like there's gonna be like a, a you know like a baton passing basically a torch passing to her so she's gonna so you were saying before about the story i think the story is that um there was another black widow well there have been other black widows besides natasha so uh, elena belova has been the black widow in the comics at various points over the years so it is it does make sense as far as you know the marvel canon is concerned for there to be someone else with the Black Widow moniker that isn't yeah. Natasha Romano. So yeah, I, I'm into this. I like the actress. It kind of yeah, it's like a soft little ruby because she's you know, even though Scarlet isn't old, but I guess all the actors are at a point now. They've been doing this for close to a decade. So it's like mm. 
how long can they keep doing it? And she, you know, wants to move on to other things. And yeah, you just get the new up and comer, which uh, Florence Pugh is. And she's got a different sort of twist. And you kind of need that character, that grounded, because you've got all the yeah. characters flying around and superpowered. You kind of need that down low. We can take out security guards, you know? Yeah. Be the nice yeah, yeah with it being off. stealthy and like, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But this is the thing. I, I, it's always a little bit... Um, you know when you've got this really like massive overarching story like you have yeah. in, in Marvel and then it's like you go back in the past and then it's like okay so they're passing the torch and that occurred before all the other stuff I guess yeah. she would have gone on the snap or something why did she not appear later True. why was there no reunion between her and you know uh, her and Natasha you know, stuff like that. I don't know. I guess maybe some of that stuff will be answered in there as to why, uh, mm. you know, what, what happened there. Maybe there was, there was a, uh, you know, a, a torch passing, but it was kind of like you stay over there in like that Russian Eastern European area yeah. and I'll deal with the stuff. On Who the knows? Maybe at the end she invites us to come with her to be part of what she's doing with the Avengers. Maybe she's like, no, I'll stay in Russia, do my thing in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mother Russia. Yeah. That's it. And after finding out she dies, that's when she decides, okay, screw it, I'm gonna take it. Oh, yeah, exactly. And then then she comes in, and then she just turns up, just yeah. turns up there with the, uh, you know, um, to, to see what's going I'm on. Really curious to know what the sting is gonna be at the end of the credits, because that could be mm-hmm. what it is that pulls her across. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's there, you know, they obviously this is kind of like a goodbye, I guess, to the to the Black Widow character, and then they're gonna kind of bring it over and say, yeah. okay, uh, you know, what's what's going on? So yeah, it'll be an interesting one. Um, I guess that may be something about somebody new who's starting the Avengers, or I don't know what, uh, you know, are they are they gonna get Nick Fury to turn up or, or something? I, I I don't know something something similar Makes to sense. that. I would, I, I would I would suspect, man. So, um, going to to more reveals, man. We had a, a cheetah kind of reveal because it's like a poster um, for Wonder Woman eighty four, and this looks all right, man. I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> like we had the little <laughs> teases, stylized images before, mm-hmm. but you only really saw the head, and you were like. I don't know. But this being like a full torso and it looks how Cheetah looks. Like, I'm like, yeah, okay. This is a, I'm curious to know how they achieved this though. Is it, is it going to be like a CG'd body sort of thing or did she get into that sort of shape? For real, was it costume? Like, I'm curious if oh, it's they're like a blend CG of the two. It, man. They're going to yeah. CG it. But even she's just walking around like, I would presume CG because Marvel CG. Actually, no, DC. How dare I say that? How dare <laughs> I mix that up? But yeah, Warner Brothers, are they going to... It's the same uh, It's the same company now because they're going for ILM, aren't they? So yeah. ILM's doing, they doing do all, the, yeah. all the Warner Brothers stuff there as well. So yeah, it's um, uh, it's interesting because they, they really have kind of like copied that character, you know? Um, yeah. And it was, um, you know, there was a lot of kind of things where people were like worried about, is it, is it going to be more of like a psychological change rather than a physical change, you know? Um, like, you know, th- that she becomes, she becomes more like Tita, but it actually looks like she's literally changed and, you know, just yeah, on like this kind of thing. Um, and I, I don't know, it kind of it gives me and gives me an idea of kind of this body horror kind of thing like oh look, yeah. look what's happening to me like you know i'm com- <sighs> converting into like this a werewolf thing. change like, ah, what is yeah. To me? yeah yeah exactly. i was com- I-, I was totally expecting that she'd maybe have like a cat nose maybe a bit of whiskers maybe cat contacts but she'd just be wearing like a suit like sharon stone was in the other crappy cat mm-hmm, woman mm-hmm. And it that was going to be, be horrendous. That. That but be no, absolutely, no, they've horrendous. committed. Yeah, they've they've actually like. I I really do hope they do that thing exactly like you were saying, where it's like, ah, no, I've changed into this character rather mm. than, um, rather than what they did with that horrendous Catwoman film, which is basically like, oh, look, I've got these powers now. How great! And it, and I see, you know that kind of thing. Look at me, I'm amazing. Like that is not the way they should go they should go the other the other route there completely man so um let's let's stick with dc for the moment man because this is another like literally ongoing you know what if you're if 
if you're a little bit depressed or sad about anything, there's a lot of stuff, coronavirus stuff going on there at the moment, right? And, you know, uh, people sadly are, you know, uh, not being able to go to work and all this kind of stuff, man. But I'm telling you, if you want to see, like, entertainment, yeah, go and read the news about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Oh, oh, uh, correction, Amber Turd. (laughs) <laughs> that's what they call it <laughs> apparently that's a little sad name that was, that, was, <laughs> that was amazing that was amazing so uh so literally every wow. single and the thing is this right okay so um the the interesting thing is when you go past like the news agent or whatever and you see that row of newspapers yeah. overwhelmingly saying like uh positive stuff about amber and saying like Johnny did this and Johnny did that kind of stuff. Right. And it's like overwhelmingly in support of him. Then when that thing came up, so guys, if you don't know, basically what happened was right. Apparently Johnny Depp was very, very late for some award ceremony or going out or something like that. No, it was her birthday and he was late to the birthday. Oh, her her birthday. Half an hour late. That's all it was. Which is nothing for a, you know, Hollywood star kind of thing, I guess, really, isn't it? Yeah. So apparently he threw a phone at her or something. So in order for uh, her, she retaliated by basically, basically taking a dump in his bed, right? Oh, well, I heard the phone was after the shit. Like it, the shit came off because he left the party and she was so mad that she shit in the bed. Can't take it right. They told Jenny, Johnny, and they had an argument and then the phone thing, I don't know. Whoa. I heard, I heard it was before, basically she got mad at him for being late. He threw the phone and then later on she left she left the present for him in the bed. Literally. And he and he started calling her Amber Turn, right? Which is which is hilarious, right? Now this is the thing. Okay, guys, look, regardless, honestly, regardless of whether um you know, whether like you 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 support Amber Heard or you support oh. Johnny Depp or whatever, whatever, right? Um, this is horrendous PR. Like horrendous oh, PR. Dude, you hear about the conversation, the text conversation between Depp and Paul Bettany? Vision. Yeah. For the other like, Ooh, that was not a good look. <laughs> it, it's like, it's just everything. It's just like the, so ugly and like crazy. And it's just like, you know, I thought I send a lot of me- text messages, right? And it's like, these guys are like, 15,000 messages and stuff Jeez. like that. They're like, it's like, and, and that's just like to one person. Then they're going through other bits and they're going through emails and they're going through phone records. And it's just crazy. Like the thing is this, right? The overwhelmingly, okay. And I don't, um, you know, I don't want to kind of, kind of say this to, you know, t- uh, before, uh, you know, before the kind of uh, court case like finished or whatever. Uh, but, from my point of view, overwhelmingly, it looks like she's been the silly person in this. You know what I mean? Mm, and he has mm, like no problem. I mean, saying. he's a he's like a druggie. He is. He's got issues, right? And basically, um, he got like a perfect storm by you know being with her, who's absolutely crackers as well. It's kind of like those things when they have like um, uh, they have like a serial killer, and that person would be not so horrendous on their own but then they mm. join up with a partner and then when they're with a partner they go on some spree yep. or, or whatever wow. yeah yeah it's, it's well, the same, it's, murders, those guys. exactly it's the same type of uh, they're just like bonkers both of them are bonkers but the thing the thing is this right is that um it, the okay if if it was just like okay we've we've had all these issues right and we're gonna kind of keep it under wraps and it's like you know what uh, we're going to separate, uh, you know, you pay me some money because, you know, we were married or whatever, and then forget about it. Then it's fine. But she threw him under a bus, man, which is the, which is the problem. Which is right? dumb. You know. Yeah, because it just highlights all of her problems. And the thing is, this is only him on the stand. I don't think she's taking the stand yet. So I'm curious. I'm, I'm all... waiting for that. I'm oh. waiting for that. Because there's going to be man. crocodile tears like, crazy mate yeah. oh johnny did this johnny beat me up johnny did blah blah johnny helped me against the wall johnny blah. it's gonna be like that i'm telling you man it's good yeah be- none of them are benefiting from this they're, they're oh, basically yeah. both yeah. um uh, both ending up in a horrendous situation man because you know i i think i think especially um especially for her he's had a lot of dirt already thrown at him 
right? He's had that whole like. Oh, Miss, he was crawling out of it. After that audio tape came out, he was, people were switching, like feeling sorry for him and really, you know, going against her. But now this is kind of making it still, making him look bad again in a different way. Yeah. Light. And they yeah. should have just let this go. Like the whole son, suing the son, just let it go. Like, yeah. That's this. Just... Suing the son is a joke anyway, because it's like that newspaper is just pure trash. Oh, <laughs> we just post any garbage yeah. that it can do. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, um, let's just once again stick with DC for, for the moment. Um, uh, do you know, um, uh, this week, I actually, I got, I got really excited this week because I re- I re-signed up to Audible um, so you know, the t- trial, right? And then I, then I did it and then I went on and I went on to, uh, what's it called? Um, Sandman, right? A pre-order yeah. Sandman, right? And then I was like, oh, it's a pre-order. I've got to wait a week now for this to come out, right? Because for some reason I thought it was at that time is that oh, yeah. Netflix mentality of wanting it straight away. But I cannot wait for that thing to, to come, man. So um, anyways, um, apparently um, there are a couple of... Uh, uh, of things that are in development constantine uh, which is uh, you know apparently jj oh, abrams yeah. is developing some kind of constantine series uh for hbo max and also there are rumors that there is a justice league rebirth uh that is going to be coming out there as well right um and that's an interesting one because um mm. just league rebirth the question is what route they go down because this is um uh, the, the rebirth, and then it goes into Forever Evil, and uh, and all this kind of stuff there. With, with you know, when they're fighting against the crime syndicate, and mm. you know, um, I, I I don't know, I don't know. But how can you do that without Superman and without without really a Batman? <laughs> so yeah. well, oh. that's well. Just like, why are you even thinking about this when you haven't even got those other things that are there, man? Yeah. But what about Constantine? Constantine. Do you, would you be interested in a Constantine, um, you know, live action series? It depends on what sort of budget they give him. And the, again, it's like if if it's in that Balanti esque sort of vibe, then hell no. But if they do it in a way which is um, like a lot of people will have opinions on the on the Keanu Reeves Constantine movie. Truly, you can say that that wasn't a true depiction of Constantine, but if you put that aside, as a movie, it was actually, I really like it. Mm-hmm. Just if it's you judge it on... It's movie, yeah, yeah. It's actually really good. If they take that as fake to it, and that seriousness and the overarching story, the way they tell it, the narrative, then it could be a lot of fun. Because I like yeah. Constantine. He's a, a fun character, so... The, the weird thing is just there's just so much rumours coming out, and it's exactly the same thing that you were saying about Sabrina. It's like, mate, why are you talking about JL Dark? Why are you talking about Constantine? You got a swamp thing right there. Just bring that thing back yeah. and then put the characters in there, man. It's yeah. like yeah. that same mentality, yeah, man. You uh, did you ever finish something, by the way? Yeah. Did you, did you, ever, yeah. you, you finished Loved it. it. I'm really good. But the thing is, like, some, sometimes, like, you know, if you know, I think you were saying, like, because you knew it was cancelled, it, it kind of took out a lot of the thing there for you, yeah. wanting to watch the rest does, of it, man. Does. So... So yeah, um, so so let's go on to the next bit of news. Um, we we didn't talk about this last week, even though I think I kind of added it onto the list there at the end. But um, the boys, there was like a three minute um, kind of tease of the of the yeah. start of the boys, and then we got a new trailer that kind of just dropped just afterwards, right? So we'll talk about those there as well, man. So uh, me and Ed's are both like you know huge fans of the boys there, and we will be bringing that to you guys. We'll be kind of you know reviewing you know every bit. When it and I mentioned, I was about to ask you when you were talking about the Sandman Audible. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, go check out. Because I keep saying it every week, go check out the graphic audio, that site, mm-hmm. and their old DC Marvel catalogue. They've also just started The Boys over there. So oh, I think they've got okay. a new deal with Image now. So I think they've just got, I can't remember how many volumes collected in the story, but yeah, they've just started doing The Boys for graphic audio, which is full cast with sound effects. Wow. So wicked. 
Wow, that is going to yeah. be amazing, man. Amazing. Because, guys, if you want to, if you, if, if you kind of think the boys' TV program is a bit tame for you, which <laughs> and you wait until you, see, until you see this kind of thing, man. So, um, what did you think about the, uh, about the kind of teaser footage and the, and the trailer there of the, of the boys? Love it. Love it. Stormfront is going to be a love hate. I know there's going to be times where I'm loving it, but at the same time, she could make me empathize with um with uh homelander yeah which is a bad <laughs> thing but she could be so annoying in a good way that i'm like homelander just kill her man what the fuck <laughs> which is fun this is gonna be amazing uh black noir is gonna be fleshed out i heard mm-hmm. they're doing something different with him with the show version the live action so mm-hmm. I'm curious to see what they take for that and even the trailer just looks insane like how these guys survive on the run from the seven that's gonna be a yeah, do you see Homelander with his bottle of milk that he's going <laughs> to drink it? <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> or when he pushes just, his kid off the roof, trying to teach him to fly. Yeah. Oh lord, yeah, I can't it's wait. Just, it's can't just wait. like it's just so wrong. I mean, the thing is, this they've taken um they're taking a huge departure, like completely away uh, from from this kind of thing. Um, and I think kind of um, it's interesting because. Uh, when you watch the actual trailer, there's not a huge amount that's going on with the boys themselves. Like, you know, there's kind of, there's a little bit, you see Frenchie, obviously he's on the TV yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the interesting things that, uh, that um, I heard that they were, they were saying was they're going to be having uh, episodes, like two or three episodes within this, this thing, kind of like a mini series where it's going to have, um, like uh, Billy Butcher's story. That's going to be this, this yeah, season. I actually heard that they were doing like a little short film about him. So, yeah. As a separate thing. So I don't know. That's what I read. So it could be what you're saying. or something. Yeah. So, so in, the, in the comic books, they did the same kind of thing. They had this one thing about Billy Butcher and why he became such a messed up guy that he had basically mm. and what his mental- mentality was like that. And his story is insane so they're obviously they're obviously gonna be doing that man but the story that you want to see out of uh out of all of that is the female right yeah. if, they, if they do the female story it is yeah. madness right so if they if they do if they do the same that they do with billy butcher the next year this could go on for years man honestly if they if they kind of like use their brain on it it could literally go on for years because you've got you got the stormfront stuff there now and then you you know the um the the, the next year it's um you know there's there's these other kind of teams that they go to and then the then the the weird ass fake x-men team uh um, <laughs> there's a there's don't a forget guy. the batman don't, don't forget what, the batman guy yeah i mean but that's kind of come before this it's men have come before this yeah. part you know the stormfront right. stuff kind of is almost in the timeline and yeah. then they've got this other guy i can't remember what his name is he's like a guy who's kind of like he can change different shapes like paint I think I can't remember exactly what his name is, but he basically changes. He changes himself so he can look like somebody else, talk like somebody else, and basically he gets chucked out from Stormfront's group, mm. and he ends up getting put into this group, which is basically like, like a group, like a Special Olympics kind of group. <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> they're, like, they're like really like they're really like the worst superheroes ever. Like some of them, one guy, he basically <laughs> his superpower, right, is basically he when he gets scared, he he inflates his whole body just becomes this big. <laughs> <laughs> what is, when he's scared that's it when he's scared yeah so basically they go they go on missions and stuff like that and it's like he just gets scared and becomes <laughs> oh, big round ball, right? and it's like and, and this the guy hell? they send him basically they send him to this team as a punishment for like look oh. yeah, you're you, you're not allowed on the top tiers anymore mm. you've messed up so much um what what are the guys that that run it i can't remember what, what their names are now um uh the seven obviously is the main team yeah. but there's a there's the corporate side behind it i can't remember oh, what Vi- no it's um oh oh damn it's gonna bug me now yeah so the yeah so those guys are basically say to him mal chemical that's his name his name's mal chemical right and they basically say to him, mate you go in this dumbass team and he causes havoc, mate. He causes so Damn. much havoc in there, basically. So uh, so it's absolutely crazy. And the, uh, the other ones, like the, you know, the X-Men, I, I would, 
if they do the X-Men one, right, I will literally like, I'll just be, uh, I'll just go crazy, man, because I'll be like... They really could do spin-offs, couldn't they, for this show? Yeah, yeah, they could do. I mean, the thing is, is like they, um, each like three or four of the comic books kind of has like a certain theme going on with it. Mm. So you've got like Stormfront's team that goes on for a, that goes on for a few. Then you've got the Mal Chemical story with that other, you know, dumbass team. Then you've got this, um, you've got the one with the X-Men and stuff like that with the, with the, the pedo Professor X and stuff like that. What was the um, ones that are kind of like New Mutants? So like the teenage guys that are just... Yes. Got yeah, around yeah, every sex and, and yeah. Yeah, they're they're also um, they basically get people sent into them because they're just up to no good kind of all the time. And yeah. Huey goes and become you know goes undercover and stuff like that with them. And that, it just if they do stuff like that, it's be absolutely nuts, mate. I mean, there's so, some of the stuff in the comic book is just like if you put that on TV, people are going to be like, "Are you get, serious, mate?" It all depends on whether Amazon stick to this. Like, I reckon it depends greatly on how much they end up spending on Lord of the Rings because that could balloon, yeah. and that and a lot of things could be sacrificed for that because apparently Bezos loves Lord of the Rings. So, mm. this the the thing about Amazon is this: it's Amazon is different to Netflix because, say for example, if Lord of the Rings came on Netflix, mm. then pe- some people would actually sign up a subscription to go and do that. Yeah. But everyone's kind of got Amazon Prime pretty much everybody right so you kind of get those amazon things as part of it but, but so dude, it's not as if the amount of people i know who have prime that have no idea that there's tv shows and movies on there to watch okay. yeah literally so many it's really i have to explain to people you've got prime yeah yeah, yeah. so you can watch all these shows how wow what and you have to show them there's an app a separate app for it and you can actually watch. they have no idea so many people. some of the some of the films on there are just dire though like literally yeah, that's, that's what makes it fun worst. that's what makes it fun <laughs> oh, random selections of movies i love it and, and like with like top hollywood actors in it as well man there was one that i watched which had uh, robert de niro and um and edward norton in it and it was like literally like a one out of ten film it wow. was atrociously bad like horrendously bad man um have you have you um uh before we get back with the comic book stuff have you seen um a um oh, God, it's gonna it's gonna bug me now the new kevin james um film oh, the one where he's a nazi so one with the, the girl yeah. i've got that yeah. on my laptop i keep thinking of whether when i'm gonna watch it but never get around to it it's 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 like it's like fun horror right yeah. so like it's like basically like it's not like you're going to be scared watching it but it is literally like it's entertaining throughout the entire it's just her thing. taking these guys down yeah exactly Love and it. and it's yeah it's just it's wicked man it's so awesome you gotta awesome. you gotta watch it and kevin james just acting like an absolute absolute complete you know crazy geezer man uh, the, the only reason why i was thinking about that is because i i suddenly pictured the amazon prime thing in my head and and the fact that that he paul blart mall cop is on, <laughs> is on damn, damn. Never watched well that. so never watched that. <laughs> oh mate i refuse <laughs> I refuse. It, it, yeah, exactly. And then, do you know what? If you watch that, you'd be annoyed because you'd be like, "How do some people actually get to make films, right? Because you know they get the privilege and they make crap, absolute garbage." And then they like get that, more right? money to make more crap afterwards. Continually, exactly, it's, exactly. Oh, and it, and it, you know, and it's a, it's a, you know, self self-fulfilling prophecy man they just keep going on and on and on you know what i mean so uh did you see the um did you see the umbrella academy trailer as well ah i did problem is i watched the boys one first so when mm-hmm. i watched the umbrella one afterwards i was like nah, i don't care even though i enjoyed umbrella academy season one but after watching the boys you're just in a certain headspace that level of quality is just a step down when you come to umbrella academy it's just like nah. Man. Yeah, I, I, I dipped in and out of Umbrella Academy. But the problem is, whenever I watch things like this, I kind of always think, um, okay, am I watching... Say, for example, if you're watching like Buffy or whatever, there's yeah. no comparison to that. That is that is the story, right? Yeah. Or, or you're watching The Boys. It's like, there's no comparison. That is The Boys. When you're watching Umbrella Academy, you're thinking, man, I'd, just, I'd rather watch an X-Men series, you know? I yes. really would rather watch an X-Men yeah, series. Yeah, what you're saying, yeah. 
and yeah. and and every, every time you're going through, you're just like, oh, I just wish it would be, it would be, it would be something it, else. Man. Yeah, it needs a bit more. That's another one that's kind of like the warrior nun. Like, it kind of needs a little more f- personality. Like, it has, it is unique in its own little way, but it just needs a little something. I don't know what that is. Something is that does that go in the category of sit down and watch, or does it go in the category of background? Ooh, it has moments of very cool moments, but overall, kind of background for me. Because mm-hmm. I, I watched it in maybe three chunks. Like, I watched a bunch, stopped for a while, came back, watched another bunch, stopped for a while, and then finally decided to finish it. So I wasn't compelled to watch all one after the other, after the other, after the other. So, tell you. They should, they should put that as like the two, you know, two ratings, either a phone watch. So it's kind of like you're, you're sitting watching it, but you got your phone as well at the yeah, same time. Yeah. Like Miss Brown with that. Or it's a proper like sit down and watch. Yeah, kind like of, kind dark. Of thing. If you watch dark, yeah. you cannot do anything else while watching dark. It demands 100% <laughs> of your focus. Because you if you slip away, not even that it pulls, if you let your attention go to anything else like a fly you look back you will be lost completely like i have to download every time a season comes out i have to download a like a family tree pie chart of all the characters because it's have you watched in your dark no i watched um the first episode of yeah. it um and then after that i was like okay there's a lot of episodes here i'm gonna have to put a lot of effort in to watch all you have stuff. to watch it in but... german because the the dub is horrible and it Take as time, uh, different timelines, but the same character. So you're watching three or four versions of the same character. So you have to keep track of who is who and whose relationship to who mm-hmm. is. So you need a little pie chart of everybody. So you can be like, okay, who's this again? Okay, okay there's that person's <laughs> mom. They're like a, dating this person. Like literally, yeah, I, you're lot. I'm lost without that. It's, yeah. It's so good. So good. It's interesting because usually something that complicated doesn't actually keep you interested but yeah, yeah this seems like it's something that is uh you know that is still, is, still is, in and stuff like that. So, um should we go to another control so-called controversy of the week right so we have a new batwoman who's oh, been oh, revealed oh. that we're saving that for the end man because that's the that is the main thing because i know that warner brothers are going to tune into that last yeah. five minutes of the show where it's like <laughs> this is this is this is the PayPal address that you need to send money to. <laughs> <laughs> right, don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> so, um, so we've got a new we've got a new Batwoman. Obviously, Batwoman's been uh, been revealed, and um, you know we uh, Ruby Rose kind of left because reasons, I guess. You know, it hasn't really been elaborated on and stuff like that. So uh, we've got another um, actress who's, who's come in, uh, African-American actress and stuff like that. And once again, people are, you know, going off on one uh, about it. Predictably. Um, predictably. Predictably. The thing is this, for me, it's actually the complete opposite. And the reason being is, right, is that um, I have seen... Um, the, basically there's this thing where you have these actors and they go and do uh, training with sports people right and um, with her she's done like actual like um, you know training with like professional athletes and stuff like that and she's actually like she can run she can lift stuff she can box right she's actually like athletic mm. I mean, Ruby Rose is okay but it's kind of like if I got punched by Ruby Rose and I'm not a superhero if I was punched by Batwoman Ruby Rose I'd just turn around and laugh right yeah. and, be, and be, you know what I, mean? I would just be like uh yeah <laughs> exactly exactly man so you need somebody who looks like they can throw a punch it has that physicality that's it yeah, and and there is one of those things like you know uh, uh, ability to run is is a major thing because you know when they're running on like a green screen and stuff you have to make it look legit, yeah. but also as well that thing that makes it look like your punch is actually doing something or your kicks mm-hmm. actually doing something, um, this actress can actually do it way better than 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 Ruby Rose man, um, so I don't know do you have any. I mean, you don't even watch Batwoman, nor do I, to be honest. So it, I don't know why. Like, I said, I, like, regardless of the controversy, regardless of whether you care or you don't care that, you know, we've got this new uh, black Batwoman, the show's still going to suck because it's still got the same writers. It's still a Balanti-run mm-hmm. thing, so it's still going to be a terrible show. 
Yeah. If you like Batwoman, I'm sorry, but it is bad. It's so it's like, bad. I don't think this <laughs> I don't think this actress has any idea what's in store. She's probably now that she's got the role, she's probably going back right now and rewatching it all and realizing, oh crap. It's what have I done? Yeah. yeah what have I done? Uh, the, the problem is, right, okay, you've got somebody uh, I, I'm just trying to think now, anybody who's been in these DC shows who has then gone on to something else successfully. I, I honestly can't think of no. anybody. Like, um, Arrow did do a, a movie. Who was in a movie, The Cold Eight. Yeah. I think it was it. And I enjoyed that. It's actually pretty good. But yeah, he, he hasn't really... Even, even in Turtles, Turtles 2. Even, yeah, 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 he hasn't yeah, quite... Casey Jones he was, yeah. Yeah, he hasn't quite gotten his claws into a career outside of the sort of CW thing. Yeah, none of them have really... I'm trying to it's think. like you're there, no. you're stuck. Like that yeah. Flash guy, as soon as Flash finishes, that's it for him, man. He's, He's done. done. You know, He's done. Um, the, the Legends of Tomorrow and stuff like that, like literally everybody on there is never going to have another, yeah. no. another career again. So it's in their interest to keep this thing going as much as possible. But um, it's like the... Learn um, your lesson. No one got out of Buffy, truly. Like, name mm-hmm. someone who had a successful career outside of Buffy. Uh, that main cast. <laughs> Really, mm. none of them. Even Geller couldn't read. Really yeah, know. yeah, that is that is true, man. But I, I, I remember like um, when I was a kid, they used to have this thing in uh, in the town that I live called Collector Mania, right? And once a year, the whole in uh, they had this massive hall in the middle of the city mm. center. They would close that off and they'd have all these like comic book booths and stuff like that. And they'd have these Ooh. actors as well, right? Who would basically come and they would like sign stuff. Yeah. And the thing is me, me, my mom, my sister, we would never like go and get anything signed, but we would just go and just like see the actors and stuff like that. Mm. You go like, walk past them and stuff. And when the Buffy people turned up, I remember that guy Spike from Buffy yeah, like, yeah. turned up, right? We could have, we just went shopping. We didn't even know that Collector Mania was that weekend. We couldn't mm. get into the shopping center, right? And wow. the security guards stopping us getting in there. We're like, why can't we get in? They said, oh, you can't walk this way. You've got to go around the other side, right? Mm. Which is like, you know, uh, half a mile walk and then go in the other entrance. We're like, no, nah, we just want to get in the shopping center. And they're like, no, no, you can't go in this way. So we actually, we went around. And then while we're walking past to go around there, we're looking in through the windows. And it was just wall to wall people just standing there. Mom's like, who is this? Who is this person who is there? And we found out is that Spike guy from Buffy. And it's, it's just like... It's crazy how popular hundred... they are, but they just can't do anything else. Actually, correction, Alison Hannigan actually did do some other stuff. She did the American Pie films and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How I Met Your Mother for forever. But yeah, even that really is a glass ceiling. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, um, and the thing is we're actually looking at a iconic show mm. who's going to be talking about legends of tomorrow in 15 years time <laughs> no one. apart no from the one. people who worked on it and were like i used to work on a show called legends of tomorrow yeah, you know that's I mean? true unless you're like 12 or 13 and then it's kind of part of your childhood because then it'll be like for them what knight rider and airwolf was for mm-hmm. us they're not good mm-hmm. shows but you know, nostalgia is why we like it. But mm, come on, they are. Guess... Have you tried to watch? I tried to watch Eighteen the other day. It's horrible. <laughs> it is. It actually is. It's actually painful to watch. It, it, these it's not well. good. Do you know what? Do you know what is painful to watch? He Man. Yes. Oh my god. Yes, I did that as well. Oh Couldn't be. The, it was two episodes. I was like, nope, nope. Sorry, I'm, I'm out of it. I'm out. You know, back in the day when uh, when I was a kid, it was like. The original He Man, and then there was this new He Man that kind of came just crappy right? ponytail He Man. The pon- ponytail He Man, and basically, um, you know, we used to rip it like, "Oh, this He Man's crap!" Blah blah. But then, if you watch those two together, the actual um, production and storyline and voice acting <laughs> is yeah. way better yeah. in that second one in comparison to the first one. It's did the you same watch, as like, did you watch the He Man after that, the anime one? No. Nah. That was really good. Was it? Yeah, that was really good. But I think it only lasted for like one or two seasons, but because they took a whole anime aesthetic with all the, the flashlands and just all the action and all that, and it was. Uh, must have been. <laughs> must yeah, have been. It wasn't. Uh, it's the same like Thundercats. Like Thundercats, you watch the original one, it's like, it's actually almost cringeworthy actually watching it. And the other one, the 2011 one. Yeah, Thundercats, that was pretty good. Superior. That, yeah. was so, that was actually pretty good. Shame it didn't last. 
yeah, my kids used to love watching that. It's only because it didn't sell enough toys, apparently, that it never, oh. you know, it never, it never got through, man. So, um, so uh, we talked about Sandman then before. So we'll we'll actually do. Um, I'm thinking whether to actually do a, you know, a chapter by chapter review on the on, on the channel. I don't know. Yeah, if you guys like that, I will, I will do that when it when it kind of comes out. Um, but what, what, when uh, is it next week? Fifteenth. Okay. okay so three days yeah three days so i might jump onto that as well then because i've got a f- I, like i just signed up for audible last week so i've mm-hmm. got one more free book yeah i might use that so we could go through we'll go through a couple of chapters and then mm. yeah see what we think because the voice acting is crazy man you know you got you got mcavoy in there you got pat Ooh. dennings you got um uh what's called riz ahmed um yeah just just got loads of people in it man it's the voice acting is gonna be incredible um quick little interesting thing um uh what's his name uh, nick gaiman had an interview actually this week when he's talking about the sandman audiobook right and um and he was asked about oh whether he thinks that a film should come out for the sandman right and he goes actually warner brothers came to me in 93 and said we'd really like to make a film of the sandman right mm. and he's like no way i don't want you to do that i want to finish all of my stuff to do with the Sandman and yeah. have no pressure or anything like that. And then you guys can maybe decide to, to do what you want. I mean, just to think of the horrific nature of, of what it would in the night. Oh God, it would have been, it would have been terrible. Like maybe if it was, um, the guy that did Beetlejuice, what's his name? Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. it could have had some charm, but no, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. I don't think it would do, man. So, um, so guys, uh, we've also had. But the, aren't they doing a, a Sandman TV show? Apparently, they're doing a Sandman TV show, but I, I don't know. It's all of those things. Like you, they basically they it's say Netflix, one thing. It? it could be. It could be coming through. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I, the most most of these things are all going to end up getting confirmed on that DC fandom, which is yeah. coming. Uh, coming you know next month so that'll be there'll be a lot of information coming out through there which should be uh, should be quite good um so i i put this kind of little political bit into into here it's not very political but basically there was an interesting thing like um kanye <laughs> kanye west basically uh, wants to become the president of the united states and he um he set oh. out he started to set out his is it yeah, netflix confirmed neil game is even mm-hmm. talking about it Mm-hmm. So yeah, that will work. That will go for like two, two or three seasons, and it'll get cancelled. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and God, the CW. As long yeah. as it's not the CW. <laughs> as wow. long as we have, we, can you imagine Sandman on the CW? Oh my goodness! Man. So you, if they if they say Ooh, if, they, <laughs> if they said we're doing Justice League Dark and it's going to be on the CW, I'd be like, oh no, you got to be kidding me. Uh, so. <laughs> So yeah, so Kanye West set out his stuff um, basically about how he wants to be the president and things. And the interesting thing is that he said that he wanted to model the US on Wakanda, right? So I'm going to say, Ed's, Ed's is cringing right now already, right? Okay, so check this out. Check this out. This is the funniest thing ever, right? Okay, so Kanye West said, I'm going to use the framework of Wakanda right now because that's the best explanation of what our design group is going to feel like in the White House. That is a positive idea. You've got Kanye West, one of the most powerful humans. I'm not saying the most because you've got a lot of alien level superpowers and it's only collectively that we can set it free. He is, Let's uh... get... <laughs> Someone lock this, lock this guy up. He needs to go away somewhere. Like that. I'm not even he joking. Mental health, mental health is legit for this guy. He needs help. Like, how mo- how many more signs do we need? This guy needs to go away somewhere. <laughs> exactly. For a long time. Exactly. So, so he goes on. He goes. He, oh god, here we go. Uh, let's get back to Wakanda. Like in the movie in Wakanda, when the king went to visit that lead scientist to have the shoes wrap around her shoes. Just the amount of innovation that can happen. The amount of innovation in medicine, like big pharma. We're going to work, innovate together. This is not going to be some Nipsey hustle being murdered. They're doing a documentary. We have so many soldiers that die for our freedom, our freedom of information, that there is a cure for AIDS out there. There's going to be a mix of big pharma and holistic. Oh, my God. 
the thing is this, yeah, there's going to be people, if he did run, who would vote for him, right? Um, but he can't, uh, Literally, he can't run. Like, he, there's, like, a bunch of states he, can, he can't get on the ballot for those states at this stage. Like, it's, it's, it's ridiculous for me to say that. It's just... Oh, it's just, oh God. There's a conspiracy theory uh, that basically the reason why he's saying that stuff is because youngsters would um, would like divert their vote to him, yeah, the whereas vote. rather than voting yeah. for the Democrat, Democrats or, or whatever. Well, man. Well, thankfully, I, he's not going to be able to. So, I'd be more so. worried about the fact that um, uh, you know Kim K is, would be the first lady. That would be the, <laughs> that would be the worst. <laughs> oh, uh, th- uh, let me tell you one thing that you guys could investigate for your uh, for, for your podcast, right? So, so basically, so I was reading about this thing about um, about how like uh, you know Kim K could become the the first lady or whatever, and then um, I was reading about this thing, and basically, there's a there's a big history about first ladies. Uh, going into Hollywood, right? Mm. And let's say doing favors for the Hollywood actors. Really? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I'll send you the link there. I'll say the link. so. You know, be, you know. Before how many talking... first ladies would be eligible for that to happen? Like, besides Jackie O, all the rest of them have been like 50, 60 year old women. Like, what's... apparently Nancy Reagan when she was younger was. Uh, Oh, oh well, yes. when when thingy was an actor, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically, um, the uh, so you know before we we're talking about that Hollywood um, uh, program, and it's yeah. like, why do you need to, you know, oh. why do you need to like ele- when there's stories like this? So I'll send you this thing, and you'll be like, what the? Hell? <laughs> because there is, I want to see stories like that. If they brought out stories like that, I would be like. Because most of these people are dead anyway. They ain't, ain't going to worry about yeah. it. You know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, it's just like, it, it's just interesting, man. There's all the stories that were going on. Yeah. There's apparently like, um, you know, they, uh, some of these guys used to invite like these, the, like the gay Hollywood stars to the, to the White House and stuff like that as well. And just like, yeah, that, that should be the scandalous story. That should be that's that's the stuff I want to hear about. Like Epstein wasn't the first to do all this stuff, man. He just, did what he did, built off a framework of what other people have been doing for decades before him. So I want to know. Yeah, this. Is, yeah, I feel a bonus yeah. podcast coming on. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I want to put it out there that uh, Ghislaine Maxwell didn't hang herself right now, right? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> or shoot herself, or push herself down the stairs, or exactly, burn down yeah. her own prison that she's in. Yo, no, yeah no. exactly or get coronavirus or yeah. you know or wh- whatever is going on man so um did you get to see the gambit fan film by the way i did um what did you think i mean it's a super low budget it right? is it is uh like the guy like for what it was it was actually pretty good for what it was like yeah low budget magic wasn't really right like she looked like magic but powers didn't really work that way uh, but Rogue was actually more interesting than I think Rogue's ever been in any of the movies. Even though she Ro- Rogue seemed pretty more, weak, but she was yeah. still more roguelike from the comics and the cartoons than I think the movies ever got right. They should, if they did a villain Rogue, it would be like a villain storyline of Rogue. It would just be insane. Yeah. Man. Because, I, honestly, I, I really like, um, uh, for me, the way that they should do X-Men is like that because Every yeah. single one of these kids gets this power, right? And it's like, yeah. okay, imagine if you could get a power, you touch somebody, you get their power. Imagine there's some dude, he's the fastest wicked runner in your school. Movie. Yeah, huh? Zach, that would make a wicked horror movie, a rogue movie. Yeah. Just her just draining people of all their like skills, intentionally yeah. or accidentally. Well, I don't know. It could be, that could be really good. It, Exactly, and then and then Professor X is the one who's kind of like, nah, you don't have to live your life like that, blah blah. blah. Yeah. Um, but um, but that's the thing. Like, uh, you got to think about it. If you think about it realistically, man, there's like there's like no hope there. I mean, you would definitely go and I, I can't think. You know, when, if I think back when I was twelve, thirteen, uh, you know, back in the day when I used to like, you know, play basketball and stuff like that for the for the school. You know, there was a guy who was like, who was on there, who was who was our age. He's seventeen, 
and he was already six foot six yeah. and he could jump <laughs> right he could he had a flipping amazing leap and stuff like that and we just used to get mullered right by by this these all mm. the time i would just be like mm, touch this guy <laughs> so suddenly, how would that suddenly... manif- how would that manifest itself though because it's all like power so what are you... yeah but well that's the thing when she touches magneto she gets this uh, got the white oh, street, yeah. So it's kind of like maybe then I'd become six foot six, and you know, yeah, I'd like wow. have a, you know, so that's cool. the thing. That cool. so, um, the film weren't bad actually because um, I like the the Cajun. They got the Cajun accent down better than the Wolverine Origins version. Oh, don't bring that up. Yeah, man. yeah. Oh no, the way he used his up. abilities with the cars. They were some really. This is actually yeah. This could make a good basis of what a good R-rated Gambit movie could have been. What we'll never get, but... What we'll never get, yeah. If there I, was, like, a Marvel Knights sub-universe where they could have, like, the Deadpool and the Gambit and, like, X-Force, yeah, mm-hmm. this, this would... This sort of style of Gambit would fit. You know, in those days when that X-Men Origins Wolverine came out, mm-hmm. uh, it's a confession now, I didn't even know Deadpool existed. Wow. I'd never actually see so so you know like my basically like my mates were like, Oh my god, what they did what did they do to Deadpool? And I was more concerned about what they did to Gambit because I was like a huge Gambit fan back in those days, right? And I was like, What the hell did they do to Gambit? It's like he's nothing like Gambit, yeah. you know, blah but blah. And now I guess like, Deadpool didn't really come along until around that time that you left, that you abandoned Marvel for <laughs> DC. <laughs> Because he was a relatively newish, because what, the 90s? Ran a late 90s, yeah, yeah, kind of came yeah. around, mid and late. So it um, kind of makes sense to me. I d- I, honestly, I didn't even know he, he existed. And I was kind of like, okay, this is a weird character where they just, you know, I, I couldn't think of anybody in X-Men who had this weird thing where his mouth was covered and like Wolverine. Yeah, I was yeah. just like, this is just a weird fight. And then like my mates were like, man, what did they do to Deadpool? Totally ruined him, blah, blah. But uh, yeah, it's just... I don't know why oh, randomly I've just remembered that I met Rob Liefeld once at a Comic-Con. <laughs> very crazy. Like, not crazy, but these energies is off the charts. Like, what the hell? Yeah. He's got... He's- He's um he's gone full Hollywood man. He's got like a yeah. whole set of Hollywood veneers and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, it's <laughs> like interesting guy. He man. is pimping out his Deadpool connections as much as he can. Have you seen that head that he's selling? Out? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I. Do you know what? That's interesting, man. I w- I wouldn't mind that on my desk. Like, <laughs> that Hasbro that Hasbro thing, man. Even though it is like a you know, or, or I'd put it in here and then if somebody just walks in, it would, yeah, it would, yeah. be, it would be so sick, man. So, uh, so guys, let's get to the, the story of the show that you, er, everybody's been looking forward to because Ed's predicted this before. And I'm not going to say that I said anything about it because I didn't. I, 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 I hold my hands up. Nothing to do with me, man. But guys, there has been a GCPD show announced um, in the same world as Robert Patterson. So it's going to have obviously the same Commissioner Gordon um, that is in the R. Pat's, uh, you know, Batman, uh, that is going to be in this, uh, you know, in, in this Gotham City Police Department show. And I know there's one guy who's going to be excited by this. <laughs> right. Uh, unless it's announced to be on the CW, right? <laughs> well, they said HBO Max. Well, no, HBO unless, Max. unless they change their mind, but they've said, yeah. <laughs> well, HBO Max, it's kind of like Green Lantern. HBO Max by Greg Berlanti. <laughs> but the thing is, it is done by um, the director of the Batman. Matt Reeves. Yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah. involved. So he'll be like executive producer and I guess some sort of quality control. Maybe come up with some of the stories. Um, so that could be real interesting, man. Carry over the aesthetic and a lot of the, the cops and some of the smaller characters that may pop up in the pop up in the movie. But what I heard is that this will take place right before the movie happens. Mm-hmm. So it's be like a prequel that will just carry over into the movie. So that'd be kind of cool. So it'll show you the rise of the crime in Gotham and some of the yeah sort of maybe some of the mafia a lot as they kind of come up and all those sort of characters. So could be could be real cool. That. Uh, that's kind of put me off it now. Really? <laughs> that's kind of, yeah, because I don't want to see a show about, uh, you know, Maroney and, uh, you know, and, and all the other crime bosses like coming up. I want to see. That'd be season one though. Don't forget. By season two, yeah. Batman movie will be out. So now they've got to deal with Batman existing and 
Yeah, I want I want to see I want to see them dealing with Mad Hatter, and you know oh, they could do uh, they could do they never they never you know, that was just me kind of just throwing out their names that it could be like the mob stuff, but it could have actual villains as long as it doesn't deal with it the way Gotham did, where you just have these junior versions. That was a second crap. Did you ever see the Bane from Gotham? No, I was Mate. gone. I was gone. Actually, no, I saw the picture you sent. <laughs> oh, that was horrific. <laughs> That was it's horrific. Like so bad. It's just so horrendous. Do you know what? They pro- they kind of thought like, okay, let's make this guy fit into this, you know, yeah. into this kind of aesthetic, right? And it was just so, oh God, it was just, you know. Was that thought, Joker, the actual Joker? Um, well, they kind of said that he was a Joker at the end, you know, Cameron oh. Wan. He was actually pretty good, that guy, right? He was actually, I did, he was actually probably the best thing in that show. Right, it was was him. It's just all the other garbage that was going on around it. The, I feel sorry for that kid actually because he was like, "Oh yeah, I'd love to play Batman in the future." It's like, mate, you got no chance after this show <laughs> of doing anything. Fox has been bought now by Disney, and they ain't gonna employ you for nothing. So that's the end of you know absolutely yeah. everything that you know that, that, that has to do with that. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean GCPD, I guess is gonna be. Uh, you know, Renan Montoya, Harvey Bullock, and uh, and Commissioner Gordon might not even be Commissioner Gordon at that point. Um, you know, might be Captain Captain James Gordon. Um, and uh, you know that 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 just you know it just depends. I mean, as the thing is, if he's if he's the captain, then he's going to be involved in a lot more of that. You know, the solving crime stuff. Well, um, like I said, it's only like the first season, so it could start off with him. You know, lower level and. The corruption and him trying to fight against that and then you know maybe a season or two down the line or maybe by the end of the first season he becomes commissioner if they if they i i i would love it okay this is this is my absolute dream of dreams right which i doubt will happen but i would love it if as they said that this has got a no man's land vibe mm. that that is where the gcpd stuff is set right because basically because the crime well um so what happens what happens obviously uh joker sets off these bombs you end up getting flooding occurring um you know the um gotham's economy just goes uh you know just completely flat lines and you end up getting all the criminals splitting gotham into different bits yeah. and what the government does is they decide right it's a write-off so they blow up all the bridges like they did in in dark night uh sorry dark night rises and um and then they kind of let it go. And then you've got the GCPD who basically are creating these things called the blue zones. So they go and they start attacking different places. So they'll like attack like uh, two faces mm. area. Right. And, and like, you know, go and try and, you know, win the hearts and minds of people because they think Batman's dead at that point. Right. Because he hasn't, you know, he hasn't been around and stuff. Um, and you, you know, then they go and attack, uh, Bane's area and, and Black Mask area and slowly slowly they start taking over as like the, the GCPD that yeah. would be uh, that would be my like thing like literally like escape from New York with the GCPD yeah, that could be it. fun just I'm, like I'm, kind of sounds expensive though I don't know if they'll go that, that far of it but it sounds mm-hmm. like it could have been fun I'm curious though they've said in this Batman movie that they're going to have a lot of stuff in Arkham so are we going to see villains out and about doing their thing in that season one that we then see in the movie in Arkham. So that would be a nice little turn as well. Yeah. To show how they got there as well. It'll, it'll be interesting to see whether they, they basically decide, because all the times, like even in the comic books there as well, uh, they've kind of had this thing of like um, Batman kind of, uh, basically creates the villains in effect right yeah. um and you know when it got to the kind of newer ones these villains just started turning up organically you know yeah. they started turning up as a you know a, as their own kind of thing and i wonder if they're going to go for that kind of thing in this where it's like you've got these organic villains who just turned up and just kind of just like started you know started wrecking gotham and yeah. that creates the Batman rather than the other way around because that I think would be a cool way of doing doing it. You know what I mean? Cool. Um, as long as we don't see, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, Martha Wayne getting shot again. 
Oh um, god! Then. I was about to say, like, I bet you, I was about to say, <laughs> do you reckon we're gonna see like Easter eggs, newspapers, anniversary of the Waynes being gunned down, like in the background on a newspaper or stand or something, or mm. where is you know, what yeah. happened to Bruce? Bruce Wayne still missing for whatever years? Yeah, yeah, he's disappeared, gone off somewhere, gone, mm. you know, gone to, uh, gone to the northern, you know, the northern, uh, you know, northern forest to live with Bella mm. for many years, and now he's <laughs> come back. As a, you know, to, to come here, man. So, yeah. I've seen I, Twilight. I had, do, do you know why? Yesterday it was, uh, I've, I've got this thing like uh, called Live Net TV. You ever, you ever heard of it? Oh, it's, yeah. So it's basically like this app you can get on Amazon Prime and you can watch like every, every single channel, live channel. Mm. So I was flicking through the movie channels yesterday and I was like, okay, what is this? Because there was like something, there's like a massive fight that was occurring. And then literally oh, like, new moon. Literally, <laughs> they're literally like, literally like two minutes after this fight, which is quite a crazy fight. I was like, oh God, there's Jacob in here and, uh, and our pats and the, <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and I was like, oh, this has got to be like a Twilight sequel. Yeah. Or something. yeah. <laughs> Right. So, uh, so yeah. So that that that's what reminded me of that mission, man. But yeah, GCPD could be good. Uh, there's a lot of stuff obviously coming out for the, um, uh, you know, in the in, in the DC fandom, which which you kind of mm. see, man. Which, which how long is that? Because uh, what Comic Con's like two weeks away or something. Comic Con's two. Home? But the, the disappointing thing is that Marvel, like, we're not having a panel. It's oh. like, mate, you know, give us some yeah, info. Sort of. Give us some stuff that is, you know, kind of coming out. Like, you know, don't leave Anthony Mackie to just keep doing. Uh, <laughs> so you reckon you know, it will like, do like their own? The what was it? These the, the Disney's own little. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like it was D twenty three or something. Yeah, it's called. yeah. Maybe they, they, they should. They should do, man. They should do because this is the thing. Like, um, and now, um, did you hear about um, Halloween and uh, what's that other one? Um, Candyman have both been changed from their October um, release dates. So they're now coming out in the kind of end of spring in 2021, oh, right? Yeah. So, so, and the, and the rumors are, the rumors are because basically they've been doing projections there in the US saying that they're not actually going to get out of this Corona stuff until the end of the year. I right? told everyone that back in May. Yeah, April. Like it's it's so it's always been ridiculous to me that people say, "Well, don't worry, two months we'll be fine. We'll be back in the cinemas." I'm like, no, what is wrong with you? Even now, people it, talking about August. No, it could have been change. though if everybody just stayed at home, right, and just did nothing and yeah. just order your stuff in and just sit at home and just wait, right, and then it would have been fine. It would have been eliminated. We would have been totally, totally fine, man. But this don't is the thing. This is why. Man. Huh? We don't have the discipline of countries like Singapore or Japan where they actually can do that stuff and everyone has the greater good in mind for everybody rather mm-hmm. than their own mm-hmm. ego of, no, I, I want to go out. It's my right to go out and wait a month to do what I want to do. And then sit. <laughs> That's what I, that, so I did an episode of The Trench that was exactly about this, right? And I, I got, some, got some messages in saying, oh, you know, why are you going political on this? on this show on your comic book show and stuff like that and my thing was just like look yeah uh, get your shit in order because i want to watch right all these comic book films oh, and i want to watch Widow. these even I wa- wonder woman i want to watch come on give it to me that, so that's the reason why i'm talking about the halloween stuff because um those halloween and Candyman are the big two films that are coming out in october there's another big film that is also coming out in october which has been shifted which is that and I've got the feeling that that is going to be moved because they yeah. why have they moved those other two, uh, you know, those other two films away from that? Mm. Unless they're kind of saying like, okay, um, you know, um, we're not going to get many people come to the cinema. So let's just let this thing kind of have it, but they're different companies. So yeah. why are they going to let, why are they going to say, Oh, not have any competition? You know what I mean? Um, to me, I, it will be absolutely crackers 
to try and release this thing around that time because uh, America is not going to get fixed by that point. You know what I mean? I, do you know what? I'm, I'm kind of at the stage there now where I'm so starved of the comic book stuff that I would mm. literally go and sit down and I would watch Loki start to finish, right? Just to get my comic book kind of, kind of fixes and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, one division, all of that. I'll, I'll watch all of it. Right. But, you guys need to get your crap in order so we can actually start watching these things. Like, it. Otherwise, it's never... We're going to watch The Boys and that's it on repeat like 50 million times, you know what I mean? So um, so anyway, guys, um, we've, uh, we've come to the end of the show there. So um, if you want to uh, send us uh, any messages, you can email us on uh, dcvsmarvelpod at gmail.com. And guys, do try and email us through that, man. I get stuff coming through the Facebook page all the time, but it's a mission to actually go on there and then say like, okay, let me pick out this one comment and then, and then comment about it. If you want your comment read out, you need to go and uh, go and email us about it. Email address down in the description. If you're watching this on the Vulture network on YouTube. And you can also go to the, uh, go to the Instagram page and the Facebook page, which is the, uh, which is the most popular uh, at DCVS Marvel podcast there as well. Um, of course, if you want to, you know, if you're, if you're bored of this comic book stuff, how dare you? But if you're bored of this comic book stuff, Ow, nothing's been there. Stuff. Nothing's come out. You'll be bored. <laughs> That's true. If you okay, let me rephrase that. If you want to have something before all the comic book stuff comes out, then you need to go and listen to Ed's on the other two shows that he's on there as well. Yes, which is talking out of movies. Go check it out and uh, rest in ruckus. What's oh. your um, what's your old versus new this uh... uh this week? Depending on how my two fake goals were doing, Evil Dead the original versus the remake. I can't remember which years they both came out, but everyone knows Evil Dead classics, the Sam Raimi classic, and then the remake in the 2000s. Science. I think um, I, I noticed that you guys did the thing, right? And Last I didn't realize week, yeah. there was three things. There was three. Right? There, I thought there was the two. Thing right? from another, even we did, until we actually kind of sat down and looked. And it's like, oh, there's a third one. Yeah. From like the 50s. So, oh, do that one as well. Wow. <laughs> awesome. So guys, you're going to get a film education there as well. That is the, that is the other thing. So um, me and Ed's will be back uh, in, a, in a week's time with more comic book news and stuff like that. But um, if you are uh, interested in us going through the Sandman stuff, for me, I confession, I've not read a Sandman comic book. So I, I tried, but the art style was so abstract and it was a long, long time ago, but I'm very superficial when it comes to how the art of a comic book, the certain styles that I like. And that art style was just so weird and just, it wasn't, in, wasn't I didn't, it didn't appeal to me as fake. It just completely put me off. Yeah. But I'm, I'm yeah. to so, so that I'm really looking to this audio book because I have no idea what it is. And I guess Ed's already been burnt by the crappy art style. So, so, uh, so if you guys are interested in us going through that, then we can do, um, you know, we'll do, we can do a, a couple of chapters a week and then uh, discuss that and see what we think about it. Uh, until then, guys, uh, we'll see you again next time. Later.